Hi everybody, Josh with Talk About Trek, and I have just finished up a gem of a TOS novel in John Vornholt's Sanctuary. Uh, this was such a fun little book. Uh, I started this on the 21st and just finished it up today. And without going into spoiler territory, basically what you've got is a Kirk, Spock, and Bones escape story. It is most basic level. But it is so much more than that as well. Uh, John Vornholt is a fantastic Trek author. He's written many books, and uh, I've read a few just recently, and have always enjoyed his style of writing. Uh, he's a fan of the series, and you can tell because he writes the characters just so well. So, really had a good time with this one. Let's read the back cover here together and see what it has to say. <clears throat> the Planet Sanctuary, a fabled world in unexplored space which is thought to be the last refuge of the persecuted, home to both the justly and unjustly accused. Though its name has been translated into every language in the galaxy, Starfleet has never known its exact location. When the crew of the USS Enterprise is assigned to capture a dangerous criminal named Auk Rex, their pursuit takes them to an unexplored sector of space. Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and Dr. McCoy continue the pursuit in a shuttlecraft, following Alkrax to the surface of the planet, Sanctuary. Soon, Kirk and his crew are locked in a life-and-death struggle on the mysterious planet, which harbors deadly secrets and never releases its visitors. Not too spoilery of a back cover, I guess. That didn't give away too much, but... Going into a blind was fun because you just had no idea what was going on, so I did enjoy that. Uh, as the back cover says, that's how the story kicks off. The Enterprise is chasing this uh, small pirate vessel. The famed pirate Auk-Rex has uh, escaped Federation. Uh, uh, basically escaped the Federation for a long time, and most recently has escaped from a trap that they laid for them. So they are itching to get a hold of him. So they are in hot pursuit, even though he is headed towards uh, some unexplored sector of space. So <clears throat> that's how our story kicks off there. Now, I think one of the greatest things about this story is that it is it just drives right through, uh, right from chapter one, basically. So in chapter one, you know, the story starts out in space, in pursuit, but by the end of the chapter, uh, this vessel has reached Sanctuary. Kirk, Spock, and Bones plan to, uh, since the Enterprise can't go into the atmosphere, they prepare a shuttle for as soon as they're able to, as soon as they drop out of warp, they're going to bust out in a shuttle, chase him into the atmosphere, and, and capture this guy. Big mistake. So, they do that, and... Uh, like I said, this is this is just chapter one. So you get the the exciting chase to the planet, and now you've got the exciting chase in the shuttlecraft, and, and they're already on the planet in trouble. So uh, out in orbit, Scotty, in command of the Enterprise, is contacted by another ship, which is in orbit, and it's at that time they notice there are several other ships in orbit. Uh, this other ship is a Klingon bird of prey, the Rakan, and he's contacted by the captain, who is Garvak who congratulates his crew for being so brave in their pursuit of the criminals. Scotty's like, well, what do you mean? I mean, we're just sending them down there. And uh, Garvok then informs Scotty that no one that goes down to that planet ever returns. So it's basically a sanctuary for criminals and anyone trying to escape persecution. Once they get there, they can't leave and, and no one can get them any longer. So in pursuit of the shuttle down on the planet, the uh, or the craft, the uh, the pirate craft crashes, but they do sense that there's a couple of escape pods that got out. But uh, they land their shuttle. They go look around for the escape pods. When they come back to find their shuttle, their shuttle is gone. Now they're lost in the woods, and they meet their first sea knight. I think the sea knight's name was Zikri. So he's the first sea knight that they meet, and a sea knight is a very androgynous-looking being. Uh, pale, wears white robes, I think they're bald, they're shaved, uh, and he kind of informs them what Sanctuary is all about, and and finding out that they are so-called persecutors, since they were chasing someone to there, uh, he gets upset with them and just leaves them to their own devices. 
So they're lost in the woods and need to find a way to get themselves into some kind of civilization. So uh, these kind of books are always fun for me. Uh, kind of, you know, you're trapped without your technology. You need to find your way back. So again, it's just kind of hitting all the right beats here, you know. So they're now they're trapped and they have to... Uh, work their way through this this strange land as they do that they are set upon by a band of these kind of savage outsiders and it's like all these different races of people together that live out in the woods and base and once they uh once they realize that um who they are and like they they kind of they don't have anything for them that they, they uh they kind of t they tell them the story that basically you know we live out here in the jungle because we don't want to live in these cities directed by these sea knights. So we live out here and we just eat what we can, And but we're, we're on our own. But they do direct them to the the local establishment, the local kind of city that they need to find called Drohan. So now they have a destination. And how are they going to get there? They build a boat. <laughs> so they uh, Spock and Kirk and Bones, they put together a nice little raft and they go down this river. So again, just more kind of exciting little scenes a nice little exciting river rafting scene they hit a i think they hit a waterfall at some point they get into this lake where these things are if you stick your hand or foot in the water they're going to get you so just constant uh constant different little adventures that they're getting on and it reminded me a lot of reading like a john carter on mars or something like that where every chapter like the they're just getting into some new little trouble uh, on their way to where they're going um at this lake that they're in where these things are trying to get their feet and stuff there uh, they do see uh, a couple of women out on the coast who run away but then a man comes and throws them a rope and helps them and he tells them a little bit more that so basically on this planet there's lots of different colonies and different things and he lives in a colony of outsiders that are closed to strangers and he says if you come there we're just gonna kill you but he directs them to Droham so they can kind of find the way uh, so just kind of keep meeting up with all these different varieties of people that live on this strange planet here. Okay, so what am I missing here so far? You got the outsider tribes. Now they're getting to Droham here. So um, while Kirk, Spock, and Bones are down the planet, Scotty is doing his best up in space to try to figure out some way to contact them, to contact the people of this planet, see what they can do. So far no response to communications nothing like that so uh, he reaches out to some of the other ships there and he makes friends with a um, an Orion pound, uh, bounty hunter her name is Pylina and her ship is called the Gaziri so he uh, learns from her that she is able to every once in a while speak with them so he's trying to work with her to to find a way to speak with the sea knights uh, my notes fall apart here anyway. We're going to put that down and just go off of memory. So from here, Kirk, Spock, and Bones do arrive in Droham. And they found that, well, they find this bustling village of all these, you know, different varieties of races of people. All people that were seeking sanctuary. So, you know, criminals, people that were persecuted. Uh, all sorts of different people. And they're basically, all their needs are met by these sea knights. Who are, like, grilling them up delicious meats. And serving them, like, big big kegs full of beer and just keeping this kind of rowdy crew you know happy here kind of they have all the different creature comforts um, the one thing they do lack though is women it's basically mostly men here and uh kirk and spock and bones notice that that there's hardly any women here and um, they do meet a strange character who is a boat maker out on the harbor of this place who kind of encourages them to get away and uh use one of his boats to do that and from him they learn of the the next quest location for them in this book which is the city of Kyming. so they are able to uh, finagle with this character whose name is Billy Wog who is this very large uh, extremely they describe him as extremely large and strong humanoid creature and they finagle with him to get themselves a boat and get out of uh, Droham and uh, just in time actually but they get out of Droham and they set a course for Kyming. So now here we go again. You've got a little sea chapter. So you've got Kirk, Spock, and Bones on this rickety little boat going out to sea, looking for an island that they know is off in one direction, but apparently it is surrounded by mist. 
so it's going to be very hard for them to find. Uh, they have a decent trip until they run into a squall. Of course, there has to be some kind of trouble on the sea. It can't just be a, a calm trip from one place to the other. Uh, they make it through the squall after a little bit of um, a little bit of trouble, but they make it through and they're able to basically crash into the beach at Kyming. Uh, once they get once they get there, the administrative sea knight there that sees them basically says. Okay, well, you've made it here. You're welcome here. And he shows them to a little hut where they can change their clothes and spend the night and eat some food. And now they're at their new location, this kind of sanctuary called Kaiming. So you're shown, again, like a whole different way that people live on this planet. So here on Kaiming, they meet with a couple of new characters here. And they meet with uh, Rena, who's this uh, dark-haired uh, female. And... Um, her father is in the medical care of the sea knights there in Kaiming and, and is dying, apparently. And, and they say it's because of a uh, um, torture that he was under. And that's what they escaped from and they were persecuted and they, they've reached here. So, And then along with Rena, there was another girl and I didn't write her name down. I don't remember it now. It'll come back to me, though. But she is also there, and uh, she's kind of lived in this place her entire life. So uh, for her, she doesn't understand the mindset of these other people at all who, who just basically want to get off of this place, and she feels it's like the most perfect place. So they learn a little bit more here in Kaiming. Uh, the Sea Knights have a kind of a temple there where they do all the training, and they bring up the order and all that. And of course, Kirk, Spock, and Bones decide, well, that is the place that we need to be. Uh, so, uh, after the death of her father, uh, Drenna joins up with them. And it's I think it's kind of revealed at that point that her father was the pirate Aukrex. Or maybe she was the pirate Aukrex. Kind of one of those um, Dread Pirate Robert situations where maybe the name just changes, you know. So, uh, Drenna was a very cool and well written character well-written character uh, and I enjoyed her very much they gave her he gave her a couple of chapters kind of all of her own too where she uh, well actually let's get to it right now so they, they make a plan basically to infiltrate the temple of the sea knights they know there is some sort of transporter there so they're thinking hey that's our shot to get out of here and that's what they plan on doing so with a little bit of ingenuity they're able to get a hold of a sea knight robe and then they um they dress up uh, Drenna as a sea knight. I'm going to find my book and find that name. They dress up Drenna as a sea knight and have her lead them out of Kyming and towards this temple. So they get into the temple under the guise of going there for, for some kind of training, something like that. And they, uh, they are able to get through to the transporter and... Uh, but basically, once they get through and they get in there, they set off the alarms, they're out of time, they need to get out of there quick, and Spock is only able to beam them to their last known location. And it's, it's an unknown system, so like he's able to just barely learn it enough to just do that and get them out of there. So beam to the last known location they go to, all four of them, and where is that? It's back to Drohan. Only this time, not bustling and lively, but completely a ghost town. So they're running around, trying to see what's going on, uh, running up the streets. At one point, they, they raise their voice and yell. And at that point, they catch the attention of their old friend, Billy Wog, who uh, kind of motions them to be quiet and, and come on up to the top floor of this place where he's hiding at. And he shows them what's really going down here uh, with the Sea Knights. Uh, and they point towards the ocean, where all of the inhabitants of Droham apparently have been drugged and knocked out and are being loaded one by one into these cages and they just keep loading them into these cages and this in these big giant carts and these big giant automated machines getting ready to pull them off somewhere so Kirk, Spock, and Bones are like whoa okay something big is going on here uh, but it and, uh, oh I didn't tell you before but during this time Drenna disappeared so after they beamed down and were kind of running around she just kind of crept off somewhere so the uh, sea knights come after them, they beam after them uh, and are looking for them and they locate them, I'm guessing because of all the yelling, 
and then they bust in and they blast them all down. And that's it. They are screwed. They're out of it. They're put into the little cages with the other people. Uh, they are sedated and getting ready to be hauled away. But who comes to save the day? None other than Drenna. So, I mean, really the hero, the heroine of the story here um, came through, uh, dressed up like a sea knight still, and just basically stayed close to Kirk, Spock, and Bones during this whole strange trip where they load up all these people, take them up this mountain into this giant cave, which turns out to be this crazy medical facility where they take these people and they, first off, they shave them completely and then they turn them all into eunuchs and then they turn them all into sea knights. And through a course of like 90 days, they're like, they purge them of their memories of everything and they come back out of there being sea knights. So, boom, 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 that's the big twist of the book. The sea knights are actually just the people that are coming there for sanctuary. They don't have any way to reproduce themselves. So just for hundreds of years, this is what they've been doing. And they claim that they only do it with like the rowdy inhabitants of that place, Droham, and all these other places are safe. But, I mean, if they do that, really, who knows? So uh, so once that's discovered, uh, Drenna is able to track down where Kirk, Spock, and Bones are being located. She gets to Spock first, who is actually already awake, just kind of waiting for his opportunity to get away. Uh, and here comes the opportunity. So Drenna is able to uh, get Kirk, Spock, Kirk and Spock up, and they find Bones at the very last moment getting ready to be taken to his operating table. Uh, they get him up, and they plan their, or they, they start their incredible escape from the facility. So they do a little bit of sabotage to cause some de um, some distractions for them, and they're able to work their way towards the mouth of that cave and to one of those machines to get the heck out of there. So I think uh, Bones and um, Spock jump in to drive the machine while everyone else jumps on the back. And they just get out of there. And during all this time, all this distraction, uh, a lot of the sedated people start waking up and fighting back against the Sea Knights. And some of them also jump onto the thing and get away. And it's our good friend Billy Wong and um, a friendly Andorian, a Tellarite, uh, that, that get on as they make their escape out of the cave mouth. So they get out of the cave mouth and they just kind of hot foot it away and they are told by this Andorian who claims that there is a place called the Graveyard of Lost Ships and uh, he gives them the location, tells them what river you need to go to, uh, so they, they set a course in their little walking machine to get to that thing, they go up to the river and at that time they are set upon by something, they don't know, but they're assailed by rocks from above, so they have to, they kind of make up a, a thing of shields, but eventually the uh, machine takes too much damage and they have to abandon it at this point they realize they've lost the Andorian the Tellarite has been crushed uh, so Kirk, Spock and Bones and Drenna make their way kind of up towards this river towards this graveyard of lost ships uh, as they do that they kind of put together these shields to protect them from whoever's throwing these rocks from above <clears throat> they have a basically they have to kind of run and at one point it's like a, a mad scramble like to get through and they're attacked by these what are called like outsiders and they don't really go into detail about them other than they're gargoyle like so I don't know if they were maybe in, uh, ha inhabitants of the planet um, other you know people that were per persecuted that got away that turned into this thing but anyway these kind of little creatures are chasing them attacking them and have just about overwhelmed them after a, a very strong battle, you know, uh, when they are saved by these people led by their Andorian friend. So the Andorian didn't abandon them. He only ran on ahead to get his friends and come back with some, basically some grenades to scare these things off and get Kirk, Spock, and Bones into the final destination of this quest, the graveyard of lost ships. And in the graveyard of lost ships, what do they find? their shuttlecraft, the Ericsson. But as they've been told by all the people here, and all the people here in this colony are tinkers, basically. All people that want to work on ships and who dream to get back to the sky. And this is kind of their colony. So it's a colony built in this crater that's kind of filled with all of these different ships from all of the hundreds of years. So kind of a city built out of all these different ships and things. 
a very cool image. I kind of like wish that would have been featured maybe on the cover or something because that sounds really cool. Uh, so they reach there, but still no hope of leaving. They um, they do watch a rocket launch. These tinkerers they try, you know, as often as they can to do something to escape. So they've crafted a a very small two person rocket, um, hydrogen propelled rocket, and two um, brave people have want to try to get out of there. So. Um, they go to the launch, they watch the launch, it gets up about 35 kilometers in the air, and then poof, gone. Uh, so, and that's basically been the result of everything that they've tried to get out of there. Uh, so, they need to get to thinking. And who thinks better than Kirk, Spock, and Bones? And this is where, right, this book has been so fun. You've had like, uh, pirate chase in space pirate chase on a planet, you've had like river rafting, a waterfall, uh, battles with sea creatures, battles with weird gargoyles thing. Like this book has been all over the place, a fun adventure. Uh, Scotty, the little tiny B story with Scotty has just been like woven in perfectly and has been fun. Uh, but now we're at the end, we're at the final last chapter and uh, this is where it gets really good. So. They devise a plan that basically nothing of metal can penetrate through that shield. Nothing that has propulsion. However, a balloon is neither of those things. So they make a freaking giant hot air balloon and they strap Kirk, Spock, and Bones to the bottom of it in a net and they send them up in that thing. So, <laughs> so that they've got these nice pressure suits on so they are safe that way. But they send them up and they've got to get up above the shield and at that time, they can communicate with the Enterprise again and get themselves out of there. Back on the Enterprise now, uh, they kind of see this balloon coming. They've been watching really closely because they know that you know, they're planning the escape and they want to be ready to help when the time comes. So they've been watching really, really closely there. So uh, they see that it's coming. A couple of the other bounty hunter ships, they see it coming too. And they come to stop them. So you've got a little bit of a firefight now with the Enterprise fighting off these two ships, having to keep shields up uh, to fight them off, but needing to lower the shields to beam up Kirk, Spock, and Bones. So really well done at the end, where basically one of the bounty hunters takes a shot at the balloon, nails it. Uh, they're dropping fast. They send the message that they're dropping fast. Uh, Scotty is able to direct some phaser fire at one of the ships, lower the shields just in time for um, Ensign Kyle to beam them up, and Kirk, Spock, and Bones are safely back on the transporter pad after their, what I think was something like a five or six day adventure out there on the planet sanctuary. So they, they get out of there, they contact Zikri on the planet and basically say, you know, things are going to change now. We're going to tell everybody that this is not a sanctuary. What you're doing is taking people and turning them into sea knights. And that's not cool. <laughs> so uh, things are going to have to change on that planet for sure. Uh, Drenna remained on the planet, and it was her intention to at some point take it over. So just a, a really interesting story, really cool. Uh, apparently the idea came, uh, I have the, of course, Voyages of the Imagination, and when John was asked about the book or where the idea came from, it was because when Manuel Noriega was uh, sought for arrest, he sought sanctuary uh, in uh, the Papal Nuncio, and uh, the U.S. respected the authority or the ancient tradition, and they surrounded the church and played loud, loud rock music until they drove him out. So it gave the guy the idea of uh, sanctuary being a place. It sounds good until you realize that you're trapped there forever. So that's where he came up with the idea for the book. And man, what a fun book it was. So I really had a good time with that one. So anything by John Vornholt is going to get a thumbs up for me anytime. So uh, that was John Vornholt's Sanctuary. I don't know what I'm going to read next, but I do have a little something here I can show at the end that I might want to show off at some point, but Look at that. Have you ever seen a jigsaw puzzle book? 
it's got like four puzzles in there you can take apart and put together so very cool it was a gift from my brother-in-law and i might want to talk a little bit more about that and some of the other fine gifts that i was able to receive from my family this christmas so maybe something coming for that and still looking forward to the year in review video which will be coming up here real soon because we're coming right to the end of the year so wow uh, as always everybody thank you so much for watching live long and prosper and we'll see you next time bye